and we are going to talk about implicit differentiation and a little bit of logs and a little bit of trig. I'm going to give you a little bit of each. We're going to go over a little bit of each so that way y'all can start getting your feet wet with some of the homework. Let me go ahead and mention to you we're talking about three five, three eight, and three nine. So let's write that down. Three five, three eight, and three nine. Three five, three eight, and three nine. Three five is implicit differentiation. Three eight, I believe, is trig. No, three eight is implicit differentiation. Sorry. Implicit. Three five is trig. And three nine is logs. Logs slash exponents. And all that leaves is rate of change, and that's your word problems. And inverse, and I don't know if we'll hit inverse too much. So these are the three sections that we are going to be covering. Um, those three sections right there. And that's what we're going to be doing the next the, the today and tomorrow and probably Wednesday. OK, so. We'll look at trig. And that's not what I want. So trig is 3.5. And I'm going to show you the questions that I would probably put on a test. So let's go ahead and look at. Oh, why can't they just? OK, I've already sent you this, but I'll pull it up just so you can see it big time. I've already sent you this twice. I sent it last class or the class before last and I also sent it today. So so you don't have to type it out if you want to print. If you want to if you want to write that down right quick, just write sine equals cosine tan equals secant squared secant equals secant tangent cosine equals negative sine and cotangent equals negative cosecant squared and cosecant equals negative cosecant cotangent now you don't have to do much all you have to do when you're talking about these type problems is you have to one you have to memorize what i just gave you one you need to memorize the trig derivatives. And two, remember the chain rule. OK, that's the two things that you got to do for trig differentiation. What do you mean? Well, if I give you the derivative of the sine of X, I want you f of x is equal to the sine of x. I want you to take a magic marker. I don't care what color. I'm going to use pink. And I want you to put pink parentheses around that x. Somebody tell me what's in front of that x. Signs. One. Oh. So I'm not going to teach you two different derivatives. I'm not going to teach you the trig derivatives and then teach you the trig derivatives with the chain rule. I'm going to teach you trig derivatives <coughs> with the chain rule, and that way you won't have to worry about the other. So I'm just going to teach you one rule, and that is trig derivatives with the chain rule. So the derivative of that derivative of sine is the cosine. So I'm going to take my blue marker that I can't find right now. And I'm taking the derivative of the sine. 
and then X, that comes down, that, that just comes down. And then I'm going to take the derivative of what's inside. And the derivative of 1X is what? 1. And now I take that 1 and multiply it by that cosine, and I get cosine of X. And that's my answer. Now, of course, if that was a 2, then it would be 2 cosine of X. You got to be careful when you're dealing with the trig functions because they can slip a 2 right here, and that would cause you to get it wrong. Because you would say, this is what y'all would do. F of X, or I'm talking about students, is equal to sine of 2X, and then you'd look at your trig function, and you say, okay, derivative sine is cosine, and then you stop. And that is incorrect. You've got to remember this is in parentheses. So you got to multiply it by two, then you're, you've got the correct answer. Now that's what I want you to remember. I want you to remember when you're doing the derivative of the trig function, same thing with logarithms, same thing with exponents. You not only have to do the actual derivative of the trig, but then you got to make sure you do the chain rule, even if it's one, so you get in the practice of doing that. Okay. Now that's the biggest thing I need to tell you about the chain, about the trig rules. Now let's look at one. You're kidding. That's all. They give you. That's it. Oh my gosh. Let's go to the homework. I can't believe that's all they gave you. Let's go to the uh, homework for 3.5. This is true. I mean, this is this is calculus, isn't it? They're still doing the freaking limits. Let me find what homework problems is. Let me find. OK, here we go. Here we go. All right, there we go right there. This is so to start with 23. This is actual homework. 3.523 is when you're actually getting into the derivatives of the trig functions. Here, this is not bad because you got a one right here. So I'm going to do this one with you. This is a test question. So write it down. Y is equal to five sine of X plus six cosine of X. And I'm going to put a one right here and put parentheses around it. And I'm going to put a one right here and I'm going to put parentheses around it. And I'm going to do it step by step. Go ahead and start while I put my mouse back together. Damn Russians. And of course, I got a battery that's gone halfway across the room. All right, putting it back together. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so here we go. I'm going to show you, let's say that you're one of these people that really suck at trig derivatives. Well, I'm going to show you how not to suck at trig derivatives. Y prime is equal to 
five. What is the derivative of the sine? Derivative of the sine is cosine. And then I'm going to take parentheses. 1x prime. Plus. 6. Derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. Parentheses. 1x. That's how you set up. If you really suck at trig, or you've never seen trig derivatives, this is how you set up every single one. You write every single thing out. And after a while, you can cut out some of these steps. Now again, I'm not talking to the student that invented trig identities, okay? I guarantee you there's one or two of y'all out there that think y'all invented trig identities. Well, you didn't. But, there's probably about three or four students out there that's never done them or suck at them. One of the two. This is how you need to start them. So, of course, the derivative of that is one. So I'm going to do that in pink. And the derivative of this is one. That negative can come out with that six and that one. So what's negative one times six? Negative six. So y prime is equal to 5 cosine of x times 1 plus minus, sorry, minus 6 sine of x. And that's how you do trig functions. So let's do another one after this one. That is a test question. That's the kind of question I would ask you out of whatever section this is. What is it? 3.5? All right, let's do a nerd. And I'm going to put in a three here so you can see that the answer is the answer we got. There it is. Five cosine of X minus six sine. Okay, let's do a nerd. Up uh, product rule. Yeah, y'all y'all freeze up on this one. Why we all freeze up on this one? Because of e. Because of e to the x, and you got a trig function with it. Oh hell no, we ain't doing this one. We just skip this one. We'll come back to this one when the test is over. I got time. Y is equal to e to the negative x times sine of x. This is a test question. Mr. Adamson, you look like me. You look like a cartoon character with that blur on. I don't know why they can't do better on the blur. It looks like you look like a cartoon character. I do too. I oh, don't know. Sometimes it'll bleed over into my face. Yeah. And I'll look down at my little picture. And like like half of my face is blurred out. Turning into Elephant Man or something. But it's better than a ceiling. Ain't that right, Miss Gonzalez? No. Miss Gonzalez. Miss Gonzalez. Miss Gonzalez has gone to the dark side. She's gone to the. She's gone to the non-communicating side. We're never going to see Miss Gonzalez again. Y prime is equal to first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And I'm going to put a prime here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy pink highlighter and I'm going to put a print C around this guy. And I'm going to put a print C around this guy. Okay. So, first times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of the sine? 
negative cosine, cosine, Hubert. And x comes down, and the derivative of x is 1. Plus, and I'm going to put a 1 right there, so you remember that I took the derivative of 1x to get that 1. I'm getting y'all in the habit of doing that before we get to the sign of 2x or the sign of x squared or the sign of negative 3x. I'm getting you there before we get to them. And this is going to be sine of x. What's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x, right? So that's going to be e to the negative x. And then what is the derivative of negative x? Negative one. Now finish it. Oh, now we've all gone to ceilings now. We've all gone to ceilings and walls. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Got nine ceilings and walls. Thank you. We appreciate those ceilings and walls. Y'all gonna give me a complex. And I don't even know what the heck that is in Mr. Bickett's. Looks like a big peach or something. I don't know what that is. Mr. Bickett, what is that? Is that a stuffed animal or a pillar or something? What is that? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, so here we go. Y, equal, y prime is equal to all this. That one can come out here, which is e to the negative x cosine of x minus e to the negative x sine of x. And then that's y prime is equal to e to the negative x cosine of x minus sine of x. Get in the habit of doing this right here because sometimes this will be cosine squared plus sine squared, which is equal to one. And you're going to see this again. So get in the habit of doing this. Make a note. Get in the habit of factoring out with trig functions. Question so far? Not at the moment. Not at the moment? There you go. Now, could we have done that with the quotient rule? Yes or no? Yes, we could have. Let's do it with the quotient rule. Y is equal to the sine of X divided by what? e to the x, Hubert. That's right, class. All right, try that one by the quotient rule. Because you know I'm going to test you on those three rules. I meant four. Power, product, quotient, and chain. Y prime is equal to denominator times numerator prime minus the numerator times the denominator prime
all over denominator squared. All right, I'm going to give you all a minute or two. Y prime is equal E to the X, cosine of X. Minus the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So e to the x times the sine of x over e to the x, 2x or x squared, whichever one you want to do. Factor out of e to the x. Cosine of x minus sine of x over e to the x times e to the x. And that's the answer we got. So if we brought this back up and it became e to the negative x. So did anybody watch Loki? It's on my producers. What? I saw the trailer for it. It looked interesting. Wow, I'm amazed. I thought all y'all watched was cartoons and and superheroes. I thought that's all y'all watched. I'm too busy doing calculus. Oh yeah, right. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you're working on calculus all weekend. All right, next question. Uh, we could do that one, but that's kind of the same thing, quotient rule. I'd like to get to one that doesn't have just an X. And I don't think I'm going to get one. Hmm. Don't think I'm going to get one. Well, we can do that one. I don't think that one's going to be very fine. Double prime. Why double prime? That's the test question. So y is equal to e to the x sine of x. And you're going to use the product rule for y prime. So go ahead and that'd be first times the derivative of the second. plus the second times the derivative of the first. All right, I'm gonna let y'all do it, which we just did this one, but you can do it again and take the double prime. We gotta take it again.
go. So that's going to be y prime is equal e to the x. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. Plus one or times one because that's the derivative of one x is one. Plus sine of x. E to the x derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of that one x is one. So now we've got y prime. Is equal e to the x cosine of x. Plus e to the x. Sine of x. Now we got two product rules. Y double prime. Is equal to first. Times the derivative of the second. Plus the second. Times the derivative of the first. And I'm going to put a plus in red to signify that that's that plus right there. So that belongs to that. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So y double prime is equal e to the x. Derivative of the cosine is the negative sine times one plus cosine of x e to the x times one. Well, you don't really don't need to do that because that's one, so plus e to the x. Derivative of the sine is the cosine. plus the sine of x e to the x. Well, of course, we've got e to the x and everything, so I'm going to bring that out. Negative sine of x plus cosine of x plus cosine of x plus the sine of x. Somebody tell me what happens. That means I want somebody to communicate. The signs the two signs as well. Good job. And what happens to the cosines? Same thing. Double prime is equal to e to the x times two cosine x. That's a good test question. And I lost my. Where's my? I lost it. Where is uh, it? Y'all hold on. I've lost my question. Where, where's my question? There it is. And I'm going to type in three. Two e to the x. Cosine of x. Yep. I just didn't put the two outside. Uh, two times three is the same as three times two. Uh, I don't see any. Uh, that's limit. I'm not worried about the limits. Y'all can plug and chug and do that. I'm not worried about that. 
That's just plug and chug. So I'm not worried. They don't give you enough derivatives on that. We only did like three out of that whole homework. The rest of it's limits. That's that's kind of they kind of short changed you on that one. Let's go to the logarithms. You're only talking about two or three questions on the test anyway. Nowhere near product quotient, chain, and power rule. Um, 3.9. I sent y'all these also. And that is these two. Well, the derivatives, there's the derivatives right there. Now these are the derivatives of the natural log. Okay, so make sure the natural log is one over X. The derivative of the natural log is one over X. And you've got that on your sheet that I sent y'all right there. Derivative of the natural log is one over X. And same thing here, only X cannot equal zero. Y'all know that. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. And you can't take the square root, I mean, you can't take the log of a negative number. So you need to write that down. And this is the log of A. Derivative of the log is one over X, natural log of A. Okay, so there's those three, and we'll do some problems here in just a second. And then these are the, this right here is your exponential rule. Any time you have a function a to the x power, you bring out the a to the x, and then you take the natural log of the coefficient, or whatever that a is. Okay, I sent this out today. And I think last week I sent this out. So I sent this out today to help you with these two sections of trig and natural law. And let me reiterate, I'm not going to ask you the limits on log and trig. I'm going to ask you to take the derivative. So I'm probably talking about two or three Two or three homework uh, test questions we just did, and two or three out of this section. So let's look at this homework section and see if they give you a good problem. Well, they quit talking about the daggum. That's it. They don't give you anything. These slides suck. So let's go to assignments. And 3.8. No, I'm sorry. What did I say? 3.9. 3 3.9. 3 oh gosh, they're going to ask you a bunch of graphing and a bunch of limit questions. Okay, there we go. All right, write that one down. F of X is equal to 4X to the third times natural log of X. Now notice what I did. Somebody tell me, what did I do to this problem different from the way that it's written? You separated the two values. I put a dot between the two values. Why did I do that, Mr. Peniella? To eliminate confusion. Well, to be less confused, you know this is the product rule. And if you put a little bit of separation and a dot there, you'll say, oh, that's the product rule. And then you'll go, okay, F prime of X is equal to first, times the derivative of the second plus the second 
times the derivative of the first. All right, do it. <laughs> now that you got that sheet sheet with you with the logs, you should know that the derivative of the natural log of X is 1 over X. So F prime of X is equal to 4X cubed. The natural log of X is 1 over X plus the natural log of X 12x squared. Now it's all algebra. Which there's not really much you can do. There's the only thing you can do is put this over this and you can cancel out. So f prime of x is equal to 4x cubed over x plus 12x squared natural log of x. And that's going to be f prime of x is equal to 4x squared plus 12x squared natural log of x. Factor out of 4x squared. And that's going to give you 1 plus 3 natural log of x. And you could rewrite that as f prime of x is equal to 4x squared 1 plus natural log of x to the third power. Now, if you've done everything I told you to do, if you focused on the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule, and not try to get ahead of me and do all these other ones, if you focused on those four things, then chances are you should be saying to yourself right now, I'm starting to understand those four basic rules. And nobody says a word. Thank you. Oh, it's always great to have a relationship. Nobody talks. It's really great. Communication, no communication. And no matter if you're talking about a date or a classroom, it's always great to have no communication. It really is. Thank y'all. When y'all all have a janitorial closet as an office or a coat closet as an office, I want you to remember what I told you. You don't communicate, you get the sucky, you get the you get the terrible offices. And that means ceiling projections too. What question was that one? Okay, there is an exponential. We're going to do a basic exponential. Ooh, there's one. I like that one. Anybody know what we just did? I can't remember what number it was. 4x to the third natural log of x. There it is. We just did number 16. So let's type in the answer. Let's see what they got for an answer. Let's see which one they did. Uh, 
Okay, they didn't even factor out anything. They went with they went with this one right here. They went with this one. All right, let's try another one. I want to go to an exponential. And then we can do both of them. I saw an exponential a while ago. Well, I thought I did. There's one. Y is equal 7 to the X. Y is equal 7 to the X power. Now remember what your rules say. Right here. So I'm going to rewrite my problem and then I'm going to multiply it by the natural log of whatever A is. So somebody tell me what we're going to get. Uh, one over X. The seven to the X times the natural log of what? Seven. seven. Now, if you miss that one, don't tell anybody. Now, what can I do to that problem to make it a little bit more difficult? Somebody tell me. That means I want y'all to communicate again. Nothing, just I'm not going to say anything, just sit there. Miss Gonzalez, where did you go? I don't see your sea urchin anymore. I'm right here. I'm making lunch. Okay. Here we go. I guess, uh, I guess no, you get to buy by. Uh, I've already started talking now. Just forget it. <laughs> How about this? All right, do that one. So what's the difference? You rewrite it. You put a natural log of seven and you're done, right? Right? Right. Wrong. That's your answer. See the difference? That's why I tell students to put parentheses around whatever you have and put a one. Therefore, you won't forget to multiply what's in the parentheses. Now, is there any simpler way to write this? No, because you can't multiply that three times that seven. You can't multiply it. So you can't really do anything except put maybe in parentheses or put dots between them. That's about all you can do. There's two test questions right there. So that question should be seven to the X. Seven to the X times natural log of seven. All 
All right, y'all do this one. Test question, and you figure out what the best way for you to do it. There's two ways you can do it. So y is equal to four to the negative x sine of x. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that negative x. Unless you just like pain, there's no need to deal with the negative x. So y, prime, y is equal to sine of x over four to the x. Now, you don't have to do that. You could do the product rule here but you're going to forget that negative and that's going to mess you up. So y prime is equal to denominator times numerator prime minus the numerator times denominator prime over denominator squared. Four to the X, derivative of the sine is the cosine times one minus sine of x times, well, that's gonna be four to the x, natural log of four. And now you're ready to clean it up. So y prime is equal to 4x cosine of x minus 4x sine of x times the natural log of 4. And you could factor out that 4 to the x, but there's really no need to. Man, that should be your answer. They might have that natural log of four in front of the four. I don't I don't know how they're gonna do it. I never do that. I make sure that natural log of four is over to to it to itself. I don't try to put it in the middle of everything. They got cosine of x minus sine x log of, oh, I forgot the denominator. I forgot the denominator over four to the x squared and you cancel out the four x to the x to the x and you're left with cosine of x minus sine x natural log of four over four to the x. Don't forget your denominator. 
That's what I did. I forgot my denominator. Don't forget it. And it cancels. One four to the X right here cancels with this one and this one. And that leaves one four to the X. So that's cosine sine natural log over four to the X. Again, if you have really practiced the power, the quotient, the chain and the and the product rule, these should be not that difficult. That's why I make you do those four first. So you can feel confident. So you don't have to drive one of those trucks around and squats on the back end. F of X is equal two to the X over two to the X plus four. All right, go to that one. We'll finish with this one. F of X is equal two to the X over two to the X. Bring it back down plus four. All right, find the derivative. And of course, you're going to use the quotient rule. Oh. Okay, I'm ready for my Dogecoin to go up to a dollar or ten dollars so I can retire. It ain't doing it. I'm mad. I ain't even gonna talk about my Shiba Inu. It ain't doing squat. Damn Russians. Got any investors out there? Nobody? I got some in cruise ships. I'm sorry, say again? I have a few stocks in cruise ships. And what? I didn't hear you. Cruise ships. Uh, you thought, you think after the COVID they're going to go up? Well, when COVID first happened, they dropped way down, and uh, I'm at a 400% increase right now. Well, I did that with uh, the airlines, and I just got tired of seeing them going down, so I just, I just sold them. I got tired of seeing them going down. So I guess I should have kept them. And you got a 400% increase now? Yes, yeah, cl something close to that. Well, that's good. Maybe, maybe if you make enough money, you can put a ceiling on that basement, and then we can, and then you could just show us your ceiling like Miss Gonzalez does. Yeah, hopefully one day. Yeah. Or a window like Mr. Bridges, or a half a window. Uh, well, Mr. I can, okay, Mr. Jones gives us at least a half a head. But Miss Qualls gives us a window with blinds, and Miss Martinez gives us a dashboard. I'm sorry, Mr. Martinez. And let's see. Oh, there's a Miss Mr. Hull gives us a molding and ceiling, or is that a door? Help us out, Mr. Hull. Is that a door? Okay, that's the ceiling. I see your head now, so we're good. And Mr. Perry gives us a ceiling fan and a vent. But consistency belongs to Mr. Austin. Mr. Austin gives us that same picture every day. So you get the consistency award, Mr. Austin. And he done went back to bed. All right, so here we go. F prime of X is equal to denominator times numerator prime minus the numerator times the denominator prime
all over the denominator squared. F prime of X is equal to to the X plus four. Two to the X, oops, I'm sorry. Two to the X times natural log of two. Minus. Two to the X. And this is going to be terms that's going to zero out. Four is going to zero out. And that's going to leave us with this right here, 2 to the x, natural log of 2, and that's going to zero out. All over 2 to the x plus 4 to the second power. Two. I'm trying to see if there's anything you can do. You can distribute this with this and distribute this with this. I'm going to try it. I don't know if it's going to do any good. So that's going to be 2 to the x times 2 to the x is 2 to the 2x, natural log of 2, plus, no, that's not going to, 2x times 4, natural log of 2, minus 2 to the, okay, yeah, that'd be 2 to the 2x, natural log of two. Oh my gosh, I ain't believing that. Those two factor out. I mean, they're, I ain't believing that. Two to the X plus four, quantity squared, and the two to the two X natural log of twos, what do they do? They cancel. And that leaves you with this over this, and I don't think It does, but it doesn't, it's not going to cancel anything out. So I think that's your answer right here. Unless they go through and do the FOIL method, which I don't think that's going to get rid of anything. If they did, or two to the x, four, natural log of two over two x to the second plus eight times two to the x plus 16. And I don't think anything will, no, nothing's gonna cancel. So I would say that's probably going to be it as far as one of these. Let's see what they got for an answer. Four times two natural, two X natural log of two. That's what we got over 2x plus 4 squared. Okay, they just stopped right here. Take my yellow marker. They stopped right here. So that's your answer. That's a good one.
So hopefully you can see now that if you studied and did the homework, you won't have too many problems with these problems because you got the basis with those four sections, which is going to make up 70% of your test. So with that being said, we just covered we just covered 3.5 and 3.9. So let me write this down like I do, like I did in the last class. So far, we've done 3 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.3, is power rule 3.4 is product slash quotient 3.5 is trig 3.7 is chain rule 3.9 is logs and exponents. Okay, again, I'm going to mark 70% of your test comes from those three sections right there. And I would say probably that's 70% of your test is coming from these three. So that leaves six questions and you're going to get a couple here and a couple here. So you get two questions out of the trig, you get two questions out of the logs, and chances are you're going to get two or three questions out of implicit differentiation which is 3.8. That's what we're going to cover tomorrow if I don't get any questions. So we're going to cover that tomorrow, Tuesday, if I don't get any questions. Now, I've left off a couple of sections. Well, we haven't got there yet. I'm doing what I think is important. That's why I did these three first. Now you can work on trig and logs, and it'll be a whole lot easier than if you just did it in order. All right, so I'm going to shut off the presentation and shut off the recording.